Hello and today we'll be having a look at the certainty of objects requirement in order for trust to be valid in relation to fixed trust. Okay, so let's begin by saying why do we have this um, requirement of certainty of objects? Well, this is um, made pretty clear in re Court 1960, which says that beneficiaries, um, they must be certain or capable of being certain. And the whole point of this is to lay out um, exactly who the trustees own obligations to, because the trustees have to know in order to make sure they're not in breach, and the courts need to know in order to enforce a trust. It's really crucial that this is set out. Should certainty of objects fails, what happens is, if I am the settler of a trust, and I make myself the trustee, then the estate essentially it doesn't leave me, I just remain um, as I was um, before the trust. However, if I assign a third party to be a trustee, but if the trust fails on the grounds of certainty of objects, the trust is then um, given uh, back to me under a resulting trust mechanism, which we can look at at a later date. So, fixed trust. What, what are we talking about here? We're talking about trust where the interests of beneficiaries are specified. So they're set out. There's no duty of the trustees to survey a field of beneficiaries. So what does this mean? It means that for the certainty of objects test to be met, something called the list certainty test is required. What is list certainty? Well, basically, this is where trustees um, must be able to comply a complete list of all the members of the class as defined um, by the settler in order for the trust to be valid. And we get this from Morris and Bishop of Durham, 1804. Why is this the case? Well, basically, if you have a trust fund of a thousand pounds and it's to uh, and it's to be divided among um, the beneficiaries uh, equally or, you know, whatever the quantum is, you need to know how many beneficiaries are in order to um, uh, divide the calculation uh, as required. So the simple way of putting this is to know um, to calculate a thousand divided by N in order to work out one beneficiaries share you need to know how many how many what is n i.e how many uh, beneficiaries are there to begin with so consequently you need a list of all those that are in the class uh, on the balance of probabilities that it's a complete um, list so what does list certainty um, entail it entails three things first you have conceptual certainty this is the idea the concept of the beneficiaries is certain. So what we mean by this is, for example, in the case of Rebarlow, 1979, where a trust was made out to old friends. Now, the term old friends, old and friends, actually, both of them is separately and together, has different shades of meaning. And therefore, it's not um, certain exactly what this means, and therefore who the objects are, and the trust was held to be void. On similar grounds, in Rewrites Will, 1982, it was held that a trust which was made out for such people and institutions that have helped me or my late husband, this could not be um, sufficiently certain because what is help? There are different shades and levels of help and how is a trustee to know which are the true beneficiaries? You can't. And then in Rebadens number 2, uh, 1973, in this um, case, it a trust was made out to relatives and dependents. And this was actually held to be sufficiently certain because relatives, um, the courts held, was descendants from a common ancestor, so it was easy to work out who the beneficiaries are. And dependents, well, that was fairly clear looking financially speaking as well. So that's conceptual certainty. But then you have evidential certainty. This is basically that it must be certain whether somebody falls within the concept or not. So um, if we are looking again at this idea of relatives, you need to have enough evidence to show whether the person falls under being a descendant from the common ancestor or not. And the third aspect to list certainty is ascertainability. This um, refers to how easy and how certain is it that we can ascertain the beneficiaries who the trust is made out to. Now, it may be the case after strenuous efforts, there are still some beneficiaries who the trustees cannot ascertain. In this case, the trustees are allowed to proceed and um, split, um, the, distribute the property amongst the known beneficiaries. Um, and this is done under a Benjamin order, which is named after the case of Re Benjamin 1902, which authorizes them to distribute the property as if the beneficiary 
were dead if if strenuous um, steps have been taken to find the beneficiary and they could not find it. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.